May ends with a proposal to overhaul the current childcare system. The Productivity Commission are making a number of suggestions to the federal government to ensure that childcare is accessible and affordable for families. Changes would include replacing the current two subsidies with one single benefit, which would be means tested. The payments would then go directly to the parents' choice of provider. Nannies and grandparents could also be paid by the government to look after children, but there is a catch. They would need to get TAFE qualifications. To discuss this further, we're joined by a psychotherapist and father of three, Dr Shane Warren. G'day, Shane. Lovely to have you back on the show. You did a wonderful job for us yesterday. No uh, pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, do you think it's fair to say we are in need of a childcare overhaul? And do you think that a means-tested subsidy will help the families cope a little easier? Look, I think definitely it's time to reinvent childcare. Um, society's changing, work conditions are changing, work expectations are changing. Cost of living has changed, so we really do need to move forward on that. Uh, so, yeah, it is time to overhaul it. Uh, subsidy is very important. And you can see that where the government's stuck in a bit of a position here. Like, you know, that means more money when they're trying to save money. So there's a bit of an issue there. You know, but yes, I'm in favour of reinventing the system. It, all, it also seems as if they're just trying to come up with more alternatives, mm. make life a little bit easier for families by, you know, perhaps paying your grandparents or extending the work visas that au pairs mm. might be getting in the country. Look, this whole argument around au pairs and nannies, it's a very good thing to consider. You know, it's hard to get the place in childcare. It's really hard. And do you need to build a childcare centre so three years delayed? This is mm. something we can move through very quickly. But I'm in big favour definitely of regulation, big favour of actually making sure people meet a certain minimum standard be able to get that subsidy. So even though it would be grandparents who, you know, would have years and years and years of experience, for them to have to go and get a TAFE qualification, uh, you would hope that that could only be a good thing for the kids. Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, because well, TAFE can actually help you learn some things you didn't know. Acquired knowledge is very powerful, but practical skill knowledge also is very good. And we've got some great learnings about the way in which sound and moving imagery and all that kind of stuff can enhance a growing, developing brain, which I'm sure my parents and my grandparents wouldn't have their heads around. And as much as they've raised children of their own, their grandparents, at least it's probably like you're doing a first aid course, you're probably up to date with, you know, poisons information. It's just more, I guess, ticking, making sure everyone's on a level playing field yeah. and then everyone can be subsidised. Okay. Hey mate, moving on, now it seems the late uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman has decided not to leave any of his $35 million fortune to his kids. Now, in turn he's going to leave it to his, late, uh, to his actually his long-term partner. Now, in your opinion, now obviously this is his choice and his decision, but do you think this is going to affect the kids in any way? Oh, look, it's not fair on the kids, but first of all I want to say to my dad if you're watching. <laughs> Um, but look, you know, I mean, the children, it's, it's a bit hard on them, definitely, because they've had a certain lifestyle that has been set up for them, they've had a privileged upbringing, and now they've got to fend for themselves. If we haven't prepared our children for these kind of changes, we're doing them a disservice. But I get the idea as well. I mean, you know, I don't want to bring up my own children to be spoiled little brats. So I like the idea that they actually may be able to move forward in life when I'm long gone, taking care of themselves, developing their own careers, their own lives, making their own mega millions. If they and really, they would just be in the same situation as the rest of us that haven't been given a trust fund, wouldn't they? And, and in fact, their, um, their mother, you would assume, would then leave it to them anyway. Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? The, the, the truth matter is, I mean, their expectation of life is slightly different to those of us who have grown up in mega million environments, you know? So they haven't actually often acquired just a knowledge of, you know, survival and cutting corners and saving money and all these things has always been there. So that's a hard thing to learn is when you're 25. Is there not a happy medium? Could he not have left them just a little bit, enough that they wouldn't be spoiled brats and not have to work, but enough that they, if they need a kickstart, they want to start a business, whatever, he could have left them like a million each. Yeah. And then left the rest of his wife. Just a little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. A nice house and a little bit of money to spend yeah. to help you know, develop my life would be great, I think. You know, that kind of stuff. You're right. Just a small kind of bit to actually help these kids move forward. And I, look, as a father, I think it's part of my responsibility. It's a, good, it's a good way that you do that with your kids. You drip feed them and you teach them from an early age that chores result in everything else. And that's why daddy goes to work. That's why mum goes to work. It's so I can help you and support you and presents don't grow on trees. Yeah. Now, as you get older, I mean, times change and everything else changes, but it's still the same system, isn't it? That's right. It's not. Yeah, it is. It's learning to acquire and to move forward is great. If you've got mega millions, lucky you. But yes, trust fund skins can actually be a problem as well. Mm. Yeah. Still on money and kids. Uh, apparently, a growing number of kids are missing out on their formals because of the exorbitant amounts of money that it costs. People are getting limos, the dresses. It's getting up to eight hundred dollars and beyond uh, because girls, particularly, feel this pressure. 
Um, if kids are coming home, or students are coming home, and they're asking for eight hundred dollars for a you know school formula, and you can't afford it, what's the best way to deal with it? Or even if you can afford it, but you think that that's exorbitant and ridiculous? Look, I think this is one of those kind of really strong issues as parents. We sometimes they have care and control policies, mm. you know. And one of the things we've got here really is we need to actually carefully manage the situation so that it's actually an effective, cost-effective strategy for our family. Truly, look, you know, if $800 to go to a formal seems too expensive and you as a teenage child and you're driving to mum and dad, I'd say open the Sunday paper and look what $800 can buy you in the travel section if nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of other ways we can spend that money. It's not the end of the world. But yeah, sure, look, you know, it's a great event too. So we do need to keep that in mind. What can we do as a family? You know, as parents, we need to plan for this. We do know that at the end of the year, in years 10 and 12, there is a formal. So it's good to have some money available for it. But don't be ridiculous. You know, don't hire the limo. Don't spend a thousand dollars on a dress. You can do so much more and so much better things with that. Well, I moved to England. They don't have formals. Oh, really? Yeah. No, they do now because this study is out of Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Although I can imagine having that conversation at, at home and talking about what we could do as a family, and I can imagine my dad saying, oh, I'll, "I'll make the frock." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Exactly. You know, dollars. Then you go. Don't sure. worry, I want to go. <laughs> Fantastic job. Like, lots of great advice there for mums and dads and the kiddies out there. Thanks, Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, two more official photos.